welcome to the SVG TV News for Thursday, October, 20, October 6th. I'm Khalil Kato with the details. The first shipment of approximately 23,000 barrels of oil is scheduled to arrive in this country by the end of this month under the petro caribbean Agreement. This is according to Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez during a news conference on Tuesday, noting that the, log the logistics are currently being finalized with the St. Vincent Electricity Services Limited, Vinlec, in terms of storage capacity. Assuming everything goes to plan sometime before the end of this month, it should have been in October, in September, but there are a number of logistical issues, but sometime before the end of this month, we should be seeing the first shipment of diesel back with the resumption of the petro Caribbean agreement. And I've been in touch with a um, person from petro Caribbean here, the former permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security, who is still on the board <coughs> of the company, the local company, Mr. Godfrey Pompey. Um, it may be up to 23,000 barrels, that particular shipment. They're working out the logistics with the storage and with Vinlec and the like. PM Gonzalez said in his recent meeting with the Venezuela foreign minister in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, certain arrangements and commitments were made earlier, that is, this year, are still being fulfilled. In terms of other commitments, including shipments of the fertilizer urea, as well as asphalt, Dr. Gonzalez said it is a question of shipping arrangements, and specialized shipping has to be organized to bring the asphalt. To get a specialized ship to bring the asphalt. So we are making progress on, on all the items. Save and accept the item dealing with the housing. Because the entity, the, the company, which was, I've been advised, which was supposed to address the housing. Remember, we had discussed about 150 houses that that entity has reduced the extent of its production. So they it's still in the pipeline, but I've had to discuss alternative with, 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 an, with another country, um, a, a possible solution to some of the immediate pressing housing needs. After days of protest action, fish vendors and the management of the Kingstown Fish Market, the input warehouse, have come to an agreement. This was revealed to SVG TV News by President of the National Fisherfolk Organization, Winsbert Harry, who said that the fish vendors met with the management of the input warehouse today and discussed issues surrounding a memo sent out in September and the, su the subsequent protest actions. On September 28th, the memo was handed out to the fish vendors at the Kingstown Fish Market, notifying them of increases in some fees, which irritated the vendors who expressed concern about the fishing industry moving forward. In a telephone interview this afternoon with SVG TV News, Harry said that the fish vendors are happy that a settlement has been reached, noting that the increase in fees and services in the, the increase in fees of services and goods at the fish market that were outlined in the memo at 50% have been reduced to 25%. So the vendors are really happy today that they were able to bring the agriculture input way out to, to a meeting because that what we was asking for all the time. It's just to have a discussion because the fish vendors is a cooperative. And when you have a cooperative and you have a board of directors, I think the two entities was to meet and have a discussion. And now we are real, real because we was all them reasonable because what we all them wanted is that we wanted that the, the fishermen could make something, the vendors could make something, and the agriculture in the way how fish market to make something because they have to make something as well too. And um, me as a fisherman too, I'm really happy that we have an ease of the landing pool that the increase I think going to be too much. The everything to the vendors in the memo, I think it's gonna be too much and I think it's gonna be hard. They sought to justify their protest actions, stating that they were not being unreasonable as they were mainly doing so for the interest in the interest of consumers and for everyone to get a fair price. What we wanted is that 
we all of them want to be reasonable. Because the reason why we strike and what's protesting is that we did not want to sell the fish to the general public at $15 a pound. Because we know the situation of the economy, we know that cost will not be able to buy fish at $15 a pound. We know that people will not be able to buy palahu that they used to get for 25 for 5 and now buy it for $5 a pound. The 3 for 10 skip jacks. We know we cannot sell that to for to a pound. The, the landing fee that was introduced to the fishers, we know that um, fishers were not able to pay that because of the price of gas. The president of the National Fisher Fork Organization said that the fish vendors will resume their services at the fish market tomorrow. However, a dollar increase will be added to certain fish. And we will resume our service to the nation from tomorrow to force us to come back to the Kingston fish market and force the fish. We have come to where we will be selling the fish to the public at a reasonable price that we see it fit because there is no price control and fish, so the maximum price for the dolphin and the kingfish will just be a dollar increase on these fish at $11 a pound. And the other fish will be as the market it fit. It will be flexible prices for these fish, like the balahu, the amajak, the kofali, the tunas, and the skipjack. But I want to thank the fish vendors for staying together, staying strong, to stand up what they feel is right for the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, because what we've got to do, we've got to sell the fish that's how um, the price increased, but we didn't want to sell the fish at how the market increased the price enough. We wanted the, 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 the nation to eat fish, so we was avoiding to sell the fish at a way up price of $15. So I think um, the fishermen and the vendors, we all had a discussion, and I think we come to a settlement now, and I think it is very reasonable, understandable, and I think this could have been done in the first initial stage, more than we have to, um, to test and withdraw our service for, for, the four, for four days now. And I think that um, we are happy, and I think the, the, the nation will be happy because we know the state of the, the economy is not nice. Months after the Calicoa Fisherfolk and president of the National Fisherfolk Cooperative pleaded for the reopening of the Calicoa fish market, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez on Tuesday said the ongoing rehabilitation work will have to speed up, deeming the closure of the market unacceptable. In August, fisherfolk, joined, fisherfolk in the area, joined by President of the National Fisherfolk Cooperative, told SVG TV News that since 2021, the fish market was closed and fishermen had to resort to selling their fish under trees, which was not sanitary. The fisherfolk also lamented that they were unable to find the storage space for their fish, Speaking on the issue at a news conference on Tuesday, Prime Minister Gonzalez said he had already spoken with the fisheries director to have the matter addressed immediately. The fish market in Kaliakwa. Um was closed and people had to sell fish elsewhere. I mean, that's completely unacceptable. I told the fisheries director uh, was a good woman this morning i said this thing is y'all gotta move fast on this thing the the place is fixed up inside if you if you had the problem about inside not being fixed and that who are fixing it was holding up but the work i'm told is finished you mean you can't, you can't employ some people to go inside there and, 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 and run the thing? Somebody to be in charge? A couple other people there? So you, got to, you presumably work shift. Eh? And she agrees with me. The Prime Minister said it is his hope that in a couple of days he should see improvements in the work at the Calico fish market. Well, I, I, I had called... Saboto is in Antigua. He is at an important fisheries meeting with the Japanese. Called him last night. I didn't get him, so he called me this morning. But I had some other things to discuss with him. I discussed this with him, and he agrees with me. I am hopeful that we will see 
um, sometime in the next couple of days that they have persons appointed to these to, to do these things there. I think they have people in mind. And that's, that's what I was told. But it's not in my place, um, I, I believe, to call the person's name because I don't think it's, I don't know if it's finalized yet, but I was told by by both Saboto and the Chief Fisheries Officer about the name of a person and they, they have. But I, I think that these matters, policies are set in train. And any public servant along the way who, for whatever reason, holds back something, you know, from being done. Uh, I mean, come on, man. We, got, we, we, we have enough challenges already. We got to just simply work harder and smarter. And the president of the Fisher Folk Organization, Winsbert Harry, said that he is happy that the Prime Minister has stepped in and is taking measures to have the issues at the Calico fish market dealt with speedily. Harry reiterated his, that his main concern for the, is for the development of the fishing industry in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, noting that fish is a very important meal in a healthy diet. I would like to see now that the, the market in, in California should be opened back to the public as well too. I've been calling for this. I would like to see that as well open back because it's really not nice to see from California is um, a town and where so many developments in that area and to see the, the way how the fish is operating out there. I need that to be changed and I have to see if the, the fish market in California will be opened up as well too as the fish vendors will resume their service from tomorrow. Prime Minister Gonzalez is appealing to persons living outside the red and orange zones to exercise patience and have consideration for what the government is doing with its housing program, particularly the distribution of mat building materials to the vulnerable. Speaking on NBC Radio's face-to-face -face program yesterday, Dr. Gonzalez said while the government understands the demand for building materials is high, they are seeking to address the needs of the people who were affected in the red and orange zones by the eruption of the La Sufrea volcano and Hurricane Elsa, some of whom have not yet returned home. He said the initial assessment puts the numbers of houses to be, to be repaired or rebuilt in these areas at about 700. However, this number has since ballooned and the, bu the building materials received recently are to deal with some of these houses which require various levels of repair. The Prime Minister said the generalized dis distribution of materials cannot take place in the way demands are being made and asked that persons outside the red and orange zones have a bit more patience. There are some people who haven't actually moved back into their houses yet. They're living by friends and family. Some people are renting. I'm talking from the orange zone and the red zone. Yes. I know their anxieties, and I know that their pe constituencies, people in people in the constituencies in the outside of the red zone and the orange zone, they're saying, "Then people get enough already. Mm. It's our time now to get." Mm. I don't want us to behave like that. Please don't do that. We all have to be reasonable. I know their difficulties and challenges and you know that we will we help all the time because this housing thing is an ongoing business because houses do deteriorate and poor people and in some cases not so poor people need help take my word we 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 are, we are getting it all together and we are, we are, we are addressing it but I don't want you to have an inflamed passion against the people in the, in the Northeast and Northwest. See them get enough already. No, please, we don't go there. We're too small as a country and a people to be fighting like that. Prime Minister Gonzalez said that those in the affected areas in the red and orange zones must also exercise some patience as the work is ongoing. If Tom Brown gets his house fixed, and Mary Jones ain't get hers yet. Please, Mary Jones, 
don't say that your situation is worse than Tom Brown and look for some other kind of reason, whether it's politics or personal difference or whatever. No, we're not functioning like that. I know persons who carry out the program, some people, Johnny P may make errors of commission or omission. Yes. It's not a perfect world. But I can tell you what the policy is and where, what is the direction we are in and where we are going. At the same time, the Ministry of Housing and including the contractors have to expedite the work. And, and Bragsha also has to expedite work. President of the Yulu Pan Movement, Rodney Small, says they are preparing for Junior Pan Fest this month, which should have taken place during the carnival season in the format of a competition, but had to be postponed due to the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the eruption of La Soufrière. Speaking at the launch of the Independence Program of Activities earlier this week, Small said Junior Pan Fest to be hosted on Sunday, October 23rd at the E.T. Joshua Tarmac will take, on the, will take on the format of a showcase and fun day instead of the usual competition. We will see performances from just over 14 junior bands, both in the community and secondary categories. Performances will come from steel orchestras throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We are inviting the general public to come out and support our young people in PAN. Additionally, I would like to take this opportunity to invite the general public to the Sinephonium Steel Orchestra annual Independence Jamboree on the 22nd of October at the Sinel Junction commencing at 8 p 1 p.m. Sorry, with a barbecue and performances will begin from 4 p.m. and it is free. There would also be performances from other entertainers and steel orchestra. Permit me to take one second to make an appeal to my minister who is not here just yet, but also the cabinet and the parliament of St. Vincent and the Grenadines as we continue the conversation of our cultural identity and the preservation of our culture that we make the steel pan instrument our primary instrument in our school music program as it is a part of our Caribbean identity. Pan is community, Pan is about developing people, Pan is industry, Pan is prosperity, Pan can unite, Pan can impact globally, Pan is the vehicle for social progress, and Pan is the powerful change agent. I would like to say thank you in advance to all our sponsors and patrons who will attend us and support all of our upcoming activities, and may God bless you. Happy Independence. Independence calendar of activities will also include the National Independence Rally at the Victoria Park on October 25th which Joycelyn Brown of the Ministry of Education says they are looking forward to. And um, all our sec secondary and primary school will be moving to Victoria Park. You know, our, our students did not get to participate for the last two years, so I can imagine they're looking forward to being part of this year's celebrations. So from, the pri from all schools, we'll have about 25 students plus two teachers who will travel into Kingstown. And from all the neighboring schools in Kingstown, they can bring as many students as possible for our 43rd celebrations. Since we have missed it for two years, we're inviting all of our students to participate. On that particular day, we'll be celebrating our students for their um, academic achievements. So as usual, our students will receive, those who would, would be nominated, will receive the Prime Minister's Award. We have national exhibition, certificates, exhibition and bursary. So uh, we're looking forward to our students who will eventually get these scholarships and national awards. Preparations are well underway for the staging of the Miss SVG pageant, which for the first time will be part of the National Independence Celebrations this month. The pageant will be held on October 29th at the Arnesvale playing field under the theme, The Royal Return. Talent coordinator of the Beauty Shows Committee, Juanita Phillips, says patrons are in for a great show. Given the theme, there is no doubt in our mind that our patron patrons will be elegantly fitted. The earlier part of the show begins at 7 p.m. with a red carpet entrance and will feature a best dress, male and female, who will be announced at the later part of the show. 
Showtime begins at 8 p.m. The categories we are accustomed to remain the same. Swimwear, talent, evening wear, and interview. In keeping with the spirit of independence, however, a cultural wear category was added. Contestants will portray various cultural practices and festivities such as Vinci Mass, Old Mass, Vinci Cuisines, Walk Bilan, Market Morning, From Whence We Came, which will highlight our Garifuna heritage, Fishing, and Nine Mornings. Overall standard prizes to be received by our top three. Winner receive a university scholarship from the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines along with $8,000, a weekend getaway for two, and a spa certificate. First runner-up, $5,000, a weekend getaway for two, as well as a spa certificate. And second runner-up, $3,000, a weekend getaway for two, along with a spa certificate. Philip says another added element of the show is the launch of the Royal Prize. The launching of the Royal Prize is also another added element that will be featured this year for the Royal Return. How does it work? Persons must buy a Searchlight newspaper, Friday edition, for October 7th, the 14th, or the 21st. They are to find the hidden code in the newspaper, after which they will visit the Miss SVG webpage, www.missvg.com, and enter the hidden code. The first person to enter the code correctly every Friday wins either a general ticket to the Miss SVG show or a golden ticket. That means you'll have three chances to do so for the remaining three weeks. It starts this Friday, by the way, the 7th. The Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force says its latest operation targeting high crime areas continues to bear fruit with the seizures of two firearms and 14 rounds of ammunition. Reports are that on Monday, a police mobile patrol team conducted stop and search duties in, new, in the New Montrose area. During the search, one Glock 27 semi-automatic pistol, serial number PNR556, one Smith & Wesson 45 pistol, serial number HSD3385, Nine rounds of, of 45 ammunition and five rounds of 40 ammunition were discovered and seized. As a result, 18-year-old Joel Williams and Omari Sargent, 24, both unemployed of New Montrose, were taken into custody in relation to the seizure. On Tuesday, both men were arrested and charged for having the guns and ammunition in their possession without a license issued under the Firearms Act. They were expected to appear at the Serious Offences Court to answer to the charges. And the members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and its Auxiliary Force are mourning the death of the late Auxiliary Police Constable, APC Sean Pompey. APC Pompey passed away yesterday. APC Pompey was enlisted in the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Auxiliary Police Force on September 12, 2018 and served the organization and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for four years. The police force says APC Pompey was of quiet disposition and did his work diligently. He had an excellent working relationship with his colleagues at the process office. The Commissioner of Police, Colin John, and all other ranks of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and its Auxiliary Force extends con condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of the late APC, Sean Pompey. <laughs> 